That's the new girl. It's her first day. Some people say there'll be trouble. Some people saw trouble coming right from the start. Morning, Dad. Morning, Miss Wright. Got a rush. Cat knocked over the alarm. Careful on the turn. management begins at home. You're late. Guilty, sir. You'd better hurry. My coffee's probably getting cold. No wonder I love to get up in the morning. I've got such a nice boss to look forward to. Incidentally, did you see the urgent note I left on your pad last night? A top policy meeting at 9.15? Yes. Mr. Dennis got back from Washington late yesterday, and he called the meeting after you'd gone. Thanks. This must be the new government contract. Was there any explanation? I tried to finesse some information from his secretary, Beth. <laughs> but she's as informative as a quiz program. Okay, I better get going. Have some hot coffee waiting for me. Yes, sir. Good office management begins at home. They'll quit. First one, then another. Whatever they do, they're going to make hell for that first Negro girl you put on the payroll. Look, Mark, we're not walking into this blindfolded. Now, Todd doesn't pay me to manage personnel so that personnel can run the plant the way it wants. What does that mean? That you're going to sit behind every secretary with a gun in her back? It means we can put this new policy through without trouble. Now, of course, we'll have to move slowly at first, no matter how badly we need them. Now you've said it. We need them, gentlemen. The Negro represents a labor force that hasn't even begun to be tapped. How about it, Kurt? Your department's been crying for help. Think we can make it work? Maybe. Works in the shop. Negro and white hands work side by side. We don't have any trouble. Well, how was it when you started? Not bad. There was a lot of talk about trouble. But the union was on our side that time. They called a meeting, and by the time they were through, there wasn't any opposition. Those were men, Kurt. They worked with their hands. How about women? Women are different. I think we're asking for trouble. Just what is it we are afraid of? Bad publicity? Money? Or we may be raising problems to hide our own prejudices. Look, Lyle, I don't think I'm a bigot. Lyle didn't say that, Mark. And I don't think I'm a man of prejudices. At least not any that I'd let interfere with profits. My department is sales. I'm mostly on the outside, and the man I sell the product to doesn't care what color the girl is who types up the bill. So because I'm on the outside, I get around. I hear stories. What kind of stories? Strikes? Slowdowns? Trouble, that's all. Let's call it morale. A lot of white girls just don't want to work next to a Negro girl, whether you like it or not. Well, now I'll tell you something. I'm not running for election, and I'm not going to run scared. No 20-year-old stenographer is going to tell me how to run my business. I've just come back from Washington. I met there with the President's Committee on Government Contracts. Believe me, it was no tea party between me and the committee. They were talking business. Since when is the President's Committee running Dennis Industries? We're not talking just about Dennis Industries when we talk about this. We're talking national policy. That's not new. We've had it ever since World War II. Under the President's directive, no company can deal with the government, can get a contract, unless its policies are clearly non-discriminatory. But don't we employ Negroes on the production line? That's not enough. As long as we set up a color line at the front door of the offices, or any line for that matter, we are discriminating. Aren't we also responsible to the stockholders? We can't afford... We can afford stuff. anything our competition can. If we can't, we don't belong in business. From this meeting on, our policy will be to hire every person we need strictly according to ability. If you want to set an example, put the first Negro secretary in my office. Nope. Not on your life, Todd. And have 12 girls quit because we're giving away one of the most worked for jobs in the organization? Now, that would be discrimination. Just the same, I feel sorry for the first girl you hire. She'd better be strong. You're right, Kirk. She's got to be hand-picked. She's got to be so likable that any white girl with a chip on her shoulder will think twice before she starts any trouble. And so efficient that any man she works for will consider himself lucky. You know, I think the announcement of policy ought to come from your office, Todd, not just from personnel. We want every single person in this outfit to know that you're behind it, down to the last typist in the pool. Every girl working here should be made to feel that she's involved in putting through this new policy. Right. Is that it? 
That's about it. We gotta get going. Well, I'll go over the new policy with you. It's my eyes. horse's mouth. Well, go ahead, <laughs> laugh. Maybe you won't think it's so funny when one of them is sitting at the desk next to you, or at your desk, maybe. That I wouldn't wish on anybody. <laughs> ah, um, what's the joke? Some oh. joke. The voice of doom here, spreading her usual morning cheer. Um, yes, and this morning she's colorblind. Very funny. She's got some very confidential information on the best of far. I tell you, it's going to happen. It sounds terrible. It is. Well, we're all going to lose our job. Not so loud. I happen to need my job. Um, me, I'll quit first. Well, what would we do without you? Oh, probably invite my replacement down here. Marge, what's she talking about? Oh, you know Ella. She claims they're going to start hiring some Negro office oh. stuff around here. So what? So if they do, I quit. You're kidding. Go ahead, Kit. You tell them. Me, they laugh at. Kit, you, you don't mean that. Yes, I do. You don't misunderstand me. I haven't got anything against them. Take Ned, the guard at the door, for instance. We're good friends, and I like him. But that doesn't mean that I want him or his sister working in the office with me. Girls, I don't bother them, and they don't bother me. That's the way I mean to keep it. Where are you working now, Mary? Lane's. At least I was this morning. I might not be this afternoon if I don't get back pretty soon. Mr. Graham should be free in a minute. He told you what he wants to talk to you about? All I know is he said, how would I really like to go to work? And could I drop around to the Urban League on my lunch hour? Have you any idea? <laughs> Put these books away, please, Miss Thompson. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Won't you come inside? It'll only take a few minutes. Well, good luck. Thanks. Has Miss Thompson been filling your head full of tall tales? Won't you have a seat, please? Cigarette? Now, let's see. You've been working in Lane since you got out of high school, right? And now you've graduated from secretarial school. Must be pretty rough working during the day and going to school at night, isn't it? I think it was a little harder on my family than on me. They had to listen to my complaining. Well, it looks like it might have been worthwhile. How would you like to go to work as a secretary at uh, Dennis Industries? You want the truth, don't you, Mr. Graham? Oh, certainly. I'd give an eye tooth to work as a secretary, but at Dennis Industries, I'm not so sure. Oh, you're afraid maybe you're not quite good enough yet, huh? No, that isn't the reason. I'm more afraid they wouldn't want me at Dennis. Well, someone does. They called me, I didn't call them. Mr. Graham, we're not talking about anything that's secret. They've never hired a Negro girl. Everyone knows that. It's not that they discriminate, it's just that they don't hire us. Maybe things are changing, Mary. Don't, don't misunderstand. Oh, I'd love to work at Dennis. I do want a job as a secretary. And I could handle it. I know you could. I've checked your records. You have every qualification you need. Now, let me bring you up to date. Last week, the personnel department of Dennis got in touch with every employment agency in town. It told them that beginning immediately, Negroes were to be hired on the Dennis office force. Really? Yes, really. They also called up the Urban League and asked us to help them over the hurdle. Sounds as though they're serious. They are serious. 
They've already started to map a long-term educational plan so that the schools around here will know exactly what kind of help they need. Well, they've approached every organization in town and asked for their assistance. This could be a tremendous step forward. But what about me? Suppose I do go up for the job. The personnel department can't make the people like me. They can't tell the other girls that, well, that... That you're as good as they are? No, they can't. But they can give you every chance to show you are. Mary, right now they need us. And we certainly need them. If we don't take the chance when it comes along, it may not come along again. We have everything to gain. You have everything to gain. And nothing to lose except a job. And about ten feet of pride. It's a funny thing, Mary. Once someone offers you a choice, you can't ever go back to the way it was before. If you don't try, when you go out of here, you'll find your pride has shrunk to ten inches. If you do try, well, if you do try, you may have something to be really proud of. What do you say? All right. I'll try. Good girl. Well, how's the crusade for freedom at Dennis Industries coming? There's a girl coming over from the Urban League tomorrow morning. But she's through with personnel. I'd like you to have a talk with her. Sure, I'll, I'll be glad to have a talk with her. You know, talk isn't enough in a situation like this, Will. You mean you people upstairs are really serious about this? Let me point out one thing to you, Will. Dennis Industries does a lot of business with the government. Fine, and we turn out a good product. And the law says fair employment practice. It never fails. Up on cloud 19, the VIPs decide to work a miracle, and then the little wheels downstairs have to start grinding. Are you against hiring Negroes? That's not what I said, Lyle. Oh? What did you say? That I'm only an office manager. I can't make a hero out of Todd Dennis. Nobody asked you to do that. All you have to do is to follow company policy. And lose half the girls in the office while I'm doing it. Have you lost any yet? Not yet, but there's muttering. Yeah. I heard one of the girls say she'll quit as soon as we hire a Negro. For your information, she happens to be the most popular girl in the office. If she quits, it could start an exodus that would make the one out of Egypt look like a quiet Sunday afternoon. If she decides to quit, I'd like to know immediately. Anyone else for that matter. Lyle, I tell you, it won't work. The girls won't stand for it. Okay, well, you tell me why. Oh, come on, come on, don't be naive. You know the reasons as well as I do. Well, what? The washrooms, for instance. You know what I mean. Well, what do these same girls do when they go to the restaurants and the movies? Just supper? So they have no choice. Well, they won't have a choice here from now on. Now look, Will, we've notified the unions and asked for their cooperation. No trouble there. Every department head has made it official all the way down the line. There's a memo out in black and white so that everybody can see it. And we agreed that the best way is to make a definite stand from the top down. Well, you'd think we're living in the dark ages. When are going, people going to realize that this is the 20th century in the United States of America? With freedom and liberty for all. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't say anything about working where you don't want to. Are you telling me you want to quit? Oh, I probably won't have to. My job will just disappear into thin air along with the rest of the staff. You know, I don't understand you, Will. I've talked to every man in a responsible position here at Dennis. Most of them wonder what all the fuss is about. Few admit they don't like the idea of a Negro secretary, but they're willing to go along with the idea. Well, go ahead. Try them. But you, you just, you keep on saying it won't work. I wonder if you know how you really feel. Well, I'll tell you. You know those signs you put up in the plant, equal economic opportunity, well, you can wallpaper the whole building with them, but you can't change the facts of life. I've got to get home. What time is it? I don't know. Well, 
If this girl tomorrow morning passes all those tests, it's your job to place her in one of those openings you've been complaining about for so long. See you later. We're very lucky to find someone with your qualifications, Miss Newton. Thank you. You passed those tests with flying colors. Well, as a matter of fact, I thought I'd be too nervous to hold a pencil. All that's left is a physical, just routine. I'll have my secretary fix an appointment with the medical office. Kit, would you just alert the medical office that Miss Newton will be down in about half an hour? And now you'd better meet the man you'll probably be working for. Mr. Nelson, may I ask you a question? Would it be possible for me to have an assignment in the accounting department? Why? Well, to tell the truth, there's a girl in there from my class at high school. We're not friends exactly, but I thought it might make things... Miss Newton, as a new employee at Dennis, I think you ought to know our rules. We don't give favors. We don't give preferential treatment. I'm sorry, I just thought it would make... We stick to our word. Every employee is treated solely on his merits, for better or for worse. Oh, I see. And now I'll take you down and introduce you to Mr. Harden. As soon as I can. You have to wait, that's all I can say. All right, goodbye. You the gentleman who's been complaining about the lack of office help? You don't get someone to sit at that desk pretty soon, you'll have to dig me out from all this paperwork. I have somebody for you right now. You better have four hands. She's 22, graduate from secretarial school, honor student, conscientious, loyal, eager to work. Go on, I don't believe it. She's outside. Would you like to meet her? Sure, bring her in. And tell her to have her pencil sharpened so that we can get started. Miss Mary Newton, Mr. Kurt Harden. I think you'll find your work cut out for you. How do you do? How do you do? You should have seen his face. He just looked at me like he couldn't believe it. Like he couldn't believe it. What did he say? He said, how do you do? He said it twice. And then he turned around and went back to his desk and said he'd see me tomorrow. Well, what did the other guy do then? Mr. Nelson? Yeah. He smiled like there was some sort of a joke. And then he took me down to the medical office. Did anybody say anything about you being the first colored girl in the office? They didn't have to. You could see it in their faces. The way the girl in Mr. Nelson's office looked at me. Maybe you just imagined all of it. Well, that's a crazy thing to say, Mama. Why should she imagine it? It's the truth. You just don't understand. Yes, I understand. You may not think I understand, but I do. You think I can't understand because I'm your mother and I'm older, but, but I do. What you're going through isn't new. When I was a young girl, I, I had to leave high school to get a job. I would have given anything to work in a shop. But it just wasn't done where I lived. Nobody ever heard of a nigger working in a shop where white girls and white women came in to buy things. So I, I got a job cleaning house. And I cleaned house and cried at nights until I got married. Maybe my mother had something she wanted very bad and couldn't have and cried about all night. I don't know. But now I have you children. And I've watched you grow up and finish school. And now Mary's working in a shop and crying her eyes out because she can't work in an office. Well, maybe she can work in an office. And if she can, I don't want to see her thrown away the chance because she's afraid. Maybe those people hate her. Maybe some of them do. And maybe she's imagining a lot of it, dreaming of trouble to hide her fears. And if this is the way it is, then she's got to find out. And the only way to find out is to go to work tomorrow. Or else... 
When she has her own kids, she's going to have to watch them get hurt and cry and, and be afraid. And she'll always wonder if she couldn't have suffered it for them and maybe made their lives a little easier. The way I sometimes wonder now. you're getting here on time to tell me. Ma you know exactly why I'm quitting. I think you may receive a personal invitation from Mr. Todd Dennis of Dennis Industries to present your case to him personally. That it should come to this. Tell him I'd like to see her right away. Let's squash this. And get Lyle Ross on the phone. Oh, uh, Beth. May I ask you a personal question? Of course. Where do you stand on all this? You've heard the policy discussion. How do you feel? Well, honestly, Mr. Dennis, I wonder where everybody's been. I mean, doesn't anybody in this company read the newspapers or go to the movies? I think it's about time we woke up. You can be a great help to us right now. How? By giving the new girl a chance. By making sure that she gets a chance. You mean by being especially nice to her? No, not especially nice. Just plain, ordinarily nice. Common, garden variety nice. You have a certain amount of prestige here. Use it. Well, I wouldn't want the other girls to think I was doing it just because I was the now boss. look. Said. Don't you start being frightened, too. Think about it. It's not an order. Just a random comment on humanity. I'm sorry you want to leave, Miss Wright. Up to now, you've been an asset to the company. I'm sorry too, Mr. Dennis. Up to now, I've enjoyed working here. I suppose you'll be looking for another job. In a plant that doesn't hire Negroes, of course. In a plant that doesn't hire them to work in the office with me. Well, that's going to be more and more difficult. I think you understand my position? I know your position. I don't understand it. It's not difficult to explain. I know. I've heard it all before. Surely you don't expect us to adjust our policies to meet your approval. Frankly, I'd rather not work than to work under your new policy. Rather not work? Well, you're lucky. How do you mean? Lucky you can afford that alternative. I can't afford it. Neither can most of the people working here. Look, Mr. Dennis, I just don't understand why my leaving has suddenly taken on such importance. <laughs> I wish I felt flattered by all the attention. But I'm afraid I don't. Well. The fact is, you're leaving the company is much more important than a personal matter. For me, or for you. I'm not going to even attempt to argue with your prejudices. I know that in a few minutes here, I can't change whatever has made you think the way you've been thinking for a lifetime. But if you don't mind, I'd like to put the shoe on the other foot. You're a popular girl here, probably with good reason. What you do, quitting that is, they set an example for a lot of other girls who can't afford your independence. I'm responsible for this company. That means I'm responsible to the stockholders, to the people working here, to myself, even to the whole country, indirectly. And it's too late to crawl back into a shell. I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Dennis. Miss Wright. What, Mr. Dennis? 
I'm going to ask you to stay on here, Dennis, in spite of how you feel. To give us... To give this girl... To give yourself even a chance to find out if we're right. You're putting me in a pretty tough spot, Mr. Dennis. Well, it may not be as tough as you think. You're making it awfully difficult to refuse. It would have been so much easier if you just bawled me out. <laughs> this is something that has to be handled reasonably. Will you give it a try? I think it's only fair to warn you. I, I may do all the wrong things. You may be sorry if I stay. Well, every day I'm in business, I'm taking chances. I'm willing to take this one. I'll think about it, Mr. Dennis. I will say this, though. It's the first time I've stopped to think about it at all. Thank you. I'm Miss Merrill. Mary Lou. Hello, Mary. Uh, the secretary is usually over here. Won't you join us? I'll give you a hand. Everybody, this is Mary Lou. Joan. Joan. This is Kit Wright. There was no mass walkout. No one quit. A few girls even tried to help out. Resentment turned to curiosity. Then curiosity became interest. In time, Mary was no longer the new girl. And new girls no longer meant trouble. So we all settled down again to the difficult business of making a living.
need them, gentlemen. The Negro represents a labor force that hasn't even begun to be tapped. How about it, Kurt? Your department's been crying for help. Think we can make it work? Maybe. Works in the shop. Negro and white hands work side by side. We don't have any trouble. Well, how was it when you started? Not bad. There was a lot of talk about trouble. But the union was on our side that time. They called a meeting, and by the time they were through, there wasn't any opposition. Those were men, Kurt. They worked with their hands. How about women? Women are different. I think we're asking for trouble. Just what is it we are afraid of? Bad publicity? Money? Or we may be raising problems to hide our own prejudices. Look, Lyle, I don't think I'm a bigot. Lyle didn't say that, Mark. And I don't think I'm a man of prejudices. At least not any that I'd let interfere with profits. My department is sales. I'm mostly on the outside, and the man I sell the product to doesn't care what color the girl is who types up the bill. So because I'm on the outside, I get around. I hear stories. What kind of stories? Strikes? Slowdowns? Trouble. That's a cold. No wonder I love to get up in the morning. I've got such a nice boss to look forward to. Incidentally, did you see the urgent note I left on your pad last night? A top policy meeting at 9.15? Yes. Mr. Dennis got back from Washington late yesterday, and he called the meeting after you'd gone. Thanks. This must be the new government contract. Was there any explanation? I tried to finesse some information from his secretary, Beth. <laughs> but she's as informative as a quiz program. Okay, I better get going. Have some hot coffee waiting for me. Yes, sir. Good office management begins at home. They'll quit. First one, then another. Whatever they do, they're going to make hell for that first Negro girl you put on the payroll. Look, Mark, we're not walking into this blindfolded. Now, Todd doesn't pay me to manage personnel so that personnel can run the plant the way it wants. What does that mean? That you're going to sit behind every secretary with a gun in her back? It means we can put this new policy through without trouble. Now, of course, we'll have to move slowly at first, no matter how badly we need them. Now you've said it. <laughs> That's the new girl. It's her first day. Some people say there'll be trouble. Some people saw trouble coming right from the start. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Miss Wright. Got a rush. Cat knocked over the alarm. Be careful on the turn. management begins at home. You're late. Guilty, sir. You'd better hurry. My coffee's probably getting full. Let's call it morale. A lot of white girls just don't want to work next to a Negro girl, whether you like it or not. Well, now I'll tell you something. I'm not running for election, and I'm not going to run scared. No 20-year-old stenographer is going to tell me how to run my business. I've just come back from Washington. I met there with the President's Committee on Government Contracts. Believe me, it was no tea party between me and the committee. They were talking business. Since when is the President's Committee running Dennis Industries? We're not talking just about Dennis Industries when we talk about this. We're talking national policy. And it's not new. We've had it ever since World War II. Under the President's directive, no company can deal with the government, can get a contract unless its policies are clearly non-discriminatory. But don't we employ Negroes on the production line? That's not enough. As long as we set up a color line at the front door of the offices, or any line for that matter, we are discriminating. Aren't we also responsible to the stockholders? We can't afford... We can afford anything our competition can. If we can't, we don't belong in business. From this meeting on, our policy will be to hire every person we need strictly according to ability. If you want to set an example, Put the first Negro secretary in my office. Nope. Not on your life, Todd. And have 12 girls quit because we're giving away one of the most worked for jobs in the organization? Now, that would be discrimination. Just the same, I feel sorry for the first girl you hire. She'd better be strong. You're right, Kirk. She's got to be hand-picked. She's got to be so likable that any white girl with a chip on her shoulder will think twice before she starts any trouble. And so efficient 
that any man she works for will consider himself lucky. You know, I think the announcement of policy ought to come from your office, Todd, not just from personnel. We want every single person in this outfit to know that you're behind it, down to the last typist in the pool. Every girl working here should be made to feel that she's involved in putting through this new policy. Right. Is that it? That's about it. You gotta get going. Well, I'll go over the new policy with you. It's my office. It's still just...